quickly before we finish. Um, there are several projects that were supposed to be here, but were unable to be here for different reasons. Uh, I'll give you a brief run through those three or four projects to give you an idea of what they're about. The first of them is a project called SIGO, which is a, a key action three on the lifelong learning program, which is about ICT. And this particular um, project is about games, and particularly serious games. It's a network project where the idea is to promote, through the network, the use of serious games in education. Serious games is a problematic term, um, because games are by their nature not necessarily serious. The term serious games was invented to persuade people that games could be used in other contexts than play. Um, I mentioned this, this particular project has been going on for three years. Its uh, final conference is in January <coughs> next year in Tenerife. Um, and it's a, the network is aimed, as you can see from the website, it switches between the focus of teachers who might want to use serious games, developers who might want to develop serious games for education as part of their business, and researchers. Yeah? And, uh, Right now, within the system, just a day or so ago, um, if I can find it, there has been a, a discussion is developing about, if I can find it. related to gamification. And there's been a lot of talk about gamification over the last couple of days here. Um, unfortunately, I can't get in, but... Uh, this should be on the agenda. But I can't get into it right now. But what, right now, there's a provocative debate saying that Gamification is a waste of time because all it does is to turn useful activity into a competition and that that kind of competition makes the activity superficial because what happens is you get what's called a status function where instead of debating, for example, uh, geographical uh, issues like climate change, what you have is people pretending to debate them to get points to win the game but that the game itself becomes the thing that drives the matter, not the actual discussion, and that that needs addressing, because at the moment, gamification is seen as a wonderful solution to everything, but actually, it might not be. Anyway, Segan is, uh, is, the idea of Segan is it's a community for those three different groups, developers, teachers, and uh, researchers, and um, that's the website, seriousgamesnet.eu, worth a look. Um, the next one I want to show you, if I can, is another network called NetQ6. It's also coming to the end of its life. Um, this, this is a Comenius network which is focused on um, it's focused on innovation in early years uh, education. In other words, zero to six years old. And it's focused on uh, how technologies may or may not be used in early years education. Um, there's a lot of debate in that particular sector of education, um, kindergartens, about whether or not technologies should be used at all. There are people exploring, there's some fascinating work going on. There's a, there's a woman in Wales doing action research with her own daughter who has had an iPad since she was about three months old. And is, uh, she's now about four, and she can do incredible things with an iPad, this little child. And uh, she's really like totally literate in the use of the iPad. The question is, 
she's not actually touching books at all because all the books she reads, she reads, uh, she reads on the iPad. And there are questions that people raise about whether that's a good thing, whether the introduction of technology should take place later, whether certain technologies are appropriate and others aren't. For example, there are excellent uses of digital whiteboards that are placed in the corner of a room with, with uh, cushions and so on at this height so that three-year-olds can touch the screen, move things around, use it like an iPad but it's a digital whiteboard and it's a sort of like a, a digital play area, you see what I mean? And, and I've seen very interesting uses of that but again the question is to what extent is that valuable or not valuable? Is it, is it stopping other kinds of development taking place? All of those are things that the network is, uh, is interested in. But in, also, it's a network that is set up partly driven by an interest in technologies, but there are also extensive discussions just about pedagogies for, for childhood uh, years learning, um, other uses that aren't technological. For example, there's a lot of very interesting use of dogs to teach uh, particularly children who are on the Asperger syndrome, the autism syndrome, with problems with uh, relating socially, problems of communication, etc., using dogs to break through those barriers to teach them how to communicate, which has nothing to do with technology, but is a very interesting innovation in, uh, in early years education. And that network is, uh, it's had three conferences so far, one in, one in Dutch, in Poland, one that took place in Saragossa, Another one, sorry, Ankara. Another one took place in uh, Padua just two weeks ago, and the next one is in November, in the month of uh, in Saragossa, in fact. And uh, it's a very interesting network. It's a, a range of different organisations involved. As a project, it's been very interesting because rather than just having project meetings, they actually have visits. In every project meeting they go to the kindergartens in the city they're in. And it's been surprising how different the different places approach early years learning. Um, from very autocratic and disciplinarian approaches through to very sort of much more the sort of Montessori approach. And that's been very uh, interesting in that project. Another, another project I can show you here is um, is uh, called Q4i, which is a project about um, quality and innovation. The idea of this project is, is to develop a, an approach to quality in schools, so in other words, developing a, an approach to quality in schools that includes innovation as a fundamental element of the, of the quality approach. So rather than being your average industrial ISO approach to quality, which just says, what do you do, do you do it? Okay, it'll be quality. Actually says that innovation is a value that should be incorporated into a quality approach. And what they, they it's been a very challenging project for them because uh, they didn't agree at all <laughs> on how to, what their model should include, what uh, things it shouldn't include, how quality should be approached in schools because there were, there were people who, and I don't know how um, sort of close you are to the quality debate around, around schools but there's a, there's a lot of resistance in some circles to very industrial approaches uh, that take the industrial approach to quality and attempt to apply it to school as a kind of cookie cutter um, approach that particularly teachers are very resistant to, they're not happy with that kind of endless filling in of templates and this and that and the other. And um, whereas others saw it as being ne very necessary to impose almost uh, a focus on innovation in order for this to be worthwhile. They've now reached a point where um, they've, they had a conference in Valencia in, in, uh, in early June and they have a model and approach and they're just starting to roll it out. They just finished pilots in schools all over Europe. Um, and their approach is very much a holistic approach. Instead of just trying it out in a couple of classrooms, it actually is being done as a whole school thing where all the stakeholders involved in the school, from the principal to the cleaning staff, are involved in the, with the approach and they're, they're attempting to promote innovation across the whole uh, organisation rather than just in pedagogy or just in the administrative uh, sector or whatever.
And uh, last, because this has been a long session, <laughs> one more and we're finished. Um, the project in Mutu, which is about um, rural tourism. The, uh, and it's actually a very niche subject, it's rural tourism in mountainous areas. The work of the project focuses on uh, developing rural and mountainous communities where these kinds of problems are endemic, depopulation, environmental degradation, deforestation as well, um, exclusion from development because the population just isn't large enough to warrant political attention, social problems due to that, and unemployment due to that. So how can you solve these challenges? The problem is that before you can start to even solve them, all the sorts of things that we talk about in European projects, such as entrepreneurship or valorization of solutions that we found elsewhere, or um, promotion of tourism, new media, all of those things are unknown. Almost. It, it, it's, a, it's a difficulty that is um, hard to overcome because there's a whole range of training and education that would have to take place before they're even receptive to the new ideas. And there aren't really vocational training opportunities in those areas as well. But obviously rural tourism, if you live in a mountainous area, the beauty of the area, the, the, those resources are a clear value that you could uh, make the most of if you, if you had the um, capacity. And if you bring in new media into that equation, you can not only you can develop strategies for rural tourism, you can develop um, better ways of promoting the particular place you're located in, you have better access to the people who might come, and you can actually enter into contact with your potential clients in other countries before they actually arrive. Um, the issue of education and uh, training is obvious, I think we can move on from that. And what this project aims to do is to develop tourism in these rural areas but on the basis of the whole community being involved. One of the problems often with rural tourism is that when it's a, a unilateral um, initiative by an entrepreneur in a particular area, there can often be strong resistance from other people in the area who don't benefit directly from that initiative because they see it as changing their environment and in some way stopping them living their lives as peacefully as they always have because it's bringing in loads of people, I don't know, in 4 by 4s and, and there's lots of more noise and more people, the peace is, is gone, etc. So the idea is the whole community, and there's obviously a need to develop the skills and the knowledge to, to be able to do tourism properly. And I remember the first rural tourism project I got involved in, in Romania, they had a terrible problem because Romanian farmers, if someone came to their door, and this is 2006, the thing you do is open your door and you give them a bed for the night and you give them supper. And when they offer you money, you say, no way, you're insulting me. Why should I take money? This is my own. I'm being hospitable. So the whole concept of money for lodging or money for food was alien to them. <laughs> so there's this basic concept problem at the beginning. And, and obviously they moved on from there, even in the deepest parts of the Carpathian mountains. But, uh, but there is a challenge there involved in what is a good service and if you come, I don't know, from Barcelona or from here in Salamanca or wherever and you're used to a certain kind of service when you go to a hotel, when you go to a restaurant, etc. then there is a need for them to know what, what you are likely to be used to and that's a big challenge. So how did they approach it? The idea was to create a set of tools and models for, for it but they also, the, the key idea in this project is the idea, what's sometimes called the champion, or a particular um, opinion leader within the community who would be the driver of the change. In other words, you know how it is sometimes in small villages, there are two or three people, very often they're, they're middle-aged people, maybe men, maybe women, who everybody listens to and everybody respects. And the idea was to go to them and get them interested and get them trained up to act as drivers for the spread of the ideas through the, the rest of the community. What the, what the Commission like to call multipliers. So they got together their consortium, 
these are the organisations. As we can see, we have the UK, we have Italy, we have um, people in the Alps, we have people in Poland, and, uh, and we've got Canadians in the Ukraine as well. And um, they all got together to develop this project. The three areas are the Alps, the Apennines, and the Carpathians, due to the, the identities of the, uh, the bars. And these are the actual locations where they, uh, where they implemented it. The Ligurian Apennines here, up in the Alps here, and then the Carpathians in Poland, the Ukraine, and uh, Romania. Dracula, actually. <laughs> This is a rather complex uh, diagram, but basically the idea was to start by uh, developing a model, obviously through understanding local needs before we begin, um, looking at how to use new media with these groups, and then basically focusing on training opinion leaders in these different aspects, networking, world tourism, creation, administration, promotion, and the use of getting used to the resources that are available in all of these countries, there are resources. The problem is that the people in the places where they most need them aren't necessarily aware of them. And then moving on with this movement from the opinion leaders to the other stakeholders within the local communities through a process of, of training first the opinion leaders and then going out from there in a kind of barefoot doctor approach where the opinion leaders become the leaders of the training initiatives moving out into the community. Um, they did their context analysis. They, uh, they looked at uh, knowledge areas and the different occupations involved in each area in order to uh, then you have the, what the, the, the stage they're at now is in fact working with the uh, leaders where they started with um, community consultations. Now they're training the opinion leaders with online training and face-to-face -face sessions. And the idea is that they then move on into the pilot with innovators where there'll be a launch by the opinion leaders, local training actions, and the online platform that they've developed as a, as a support for that. And from there, once they've been trained up, the idea is to then move on to actually developing products within their communities, particular initiatives. And you know, the end product is supposed to be trained communities, but they still have a way to go. We shall see. These are their products, digital tools, a pedagogical model, and a set of tools and contents. Sounds familiar? And this is an example of the modules. Unfortunately, because they chose green, you do when it's rural tourism. It's almost illegible. This says entrepreneurship. This says management. This says um, information and communication technologies. This, the fourth one is engaging communities, marketing, and sustainability. Those are the modules that they see as necessary in their, uh, their plan. And this is an example of a, a module with, where they, they're making extensive use of the training of case studies and reflective assignments, um, which from where I stand is very positive. Sylvia, who's the person who should be here in my place, unfortunately she was taken ill two weeks ago and asked me to, to speak about it for her. So she's done this presentation to me and I'm repeating it for you. Like Pablo, I'm just a messenger. But uh, these are pictures from the different uh, countries, from Poland, Romania, and Ukraine. And uh, they're kind of currently in uh, looking at these uh, next stages, training and training in Austria, finalizing their materials, and there'll be a conference in May or June next year in Vienna, which is quite a nice place. So, and in Poland, in the Beck City Mountains is where the Polish partners come from, which I'm told are wonderful. Anyhow, there's the project. And they're looking at moving further out later, but I think that this is a bit early days. Those are the partners. Thank you. That's a Silvia Francario at Gmail is the person to contact if you have detailed questions about this, etc. I don't know if you have any comments, and we've gone through so many projects that the whole thing is a bit of a chaos, a mental uh, <laughs> mishmash.
But uh, perhaps it gives a good idea of the kinds of things that are going on, the kinds of things that are being funded. And I think it's time for us to stop because otherwise yeah. we will be too saturated to enjoy our dinner. Yeah. Thank you.